Welcome to the Review Zone. I'm your host, Spencer, and today we'll be re reviewing The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This movie was introduced to me um, a couple of months ago by a friend, and I, I put off watching it mainly because it didn't seem like my type of movie. But as it turns out, I can relate with some of the characters, and so can everybody. Now, the main character, Charlie, is a bit of an, like, over, overly shy person. He goes into, like, his first days of high school where it doesn't get right for anybody. I mean, especially coming from middle school. But with him, it's a bit worse because he's such a shy person. And you get that from the very first instance. You meet him, you look at his style of dress, he's very reserved. It's not like he's not wearing clothes that don't match him, but his clothing style is subdued. He's a subdued personality. Now, you go into this movie thinking, oh, well, this is just going to be another teenage drama, maybe a few laughs, maybe something terrible happens. And something does terrible happen. I can tell you right now that somebody did not die who's the main character. That was unexpected. I actually had money going. That the main character, Sam, who Charlie meets and, in fact, falls in love with, would be the one to die. I sort of thought that. So, that's not ruining anything for you. It's just ruining the feeling you get halfway through the movie. So, if you get really attached to the character of Sam, she doesn't die. Don't worry. She's fine. But something happens to Charlie, which I can't tell you. It ruins most of the movie and, in fact, influences most of his behavior once you learn of it. But we're getting off track as we're going to go look at Sam and Patrick. Now, he first meets Patrick, who is either called Patty Cakes or nothing. And you get this vibe up from him, and I, can, I connected with him really quickly because he reminds me of myself in the sense that you know, you have that one kid who, he has a lot of people he hangs out with, but doesn't have any people he calls friends. And it's not because he's not, like, cool or anything. It's just he doesn't really like that many people. And I can connect with him on that level. And you find out that he's this really weird, quirky person who doesn't take anything seriously. Exactly like me. But I also can connect with Sam. Now, Sam is the overarching love interest, I guess you would say. And she's portrayed by Emma Watson. Out of everybody here, only Emma Watson and Paul Rude, who happens to be Charlie's English teacher, who you see very little of, are the only two main characters you will know. Like, just off the side. If you have no idea who, what their names are, you will at least recognize their faces. But Sam is instrumental in showing Charlie that it doesn't take multiple people to make one person happy. That all you have to do is extend a hand to somebody and they'll come around eventually. Maybe not how you planned or even how you thought they would. Because Sam doesn't sit there and go after Charlie in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it's like one of my old past girlfriends who had a crush on me. And I didn't know she had a crush on me for years, and I've known her for three years at that point in time she told me she did. And that is just about the situation. That's where I find the biggest similarity, is because Sam is blind to the emotions of Charlie. Charlie is too shy for his own good. He, in fact, let it harm himself to the point where after he meets this group of friends, he doesn't... I don't want to say he hasn't opened up all the way with them, but he hasn't been completely himself around them either. Because he's scared and he's shy. And I guess the moral of the story is, is while everyone has those periods, they can be more harmful than they can be good. Like, Charlie starts dating Mary Elizabeth, who is the punk girl, if I'm not mistaken. She was a minor character, and I wasn't really all that... Ooh, excited for her. But, the, she, he gets tired of the relationship. And I mean, sure, go for him. I mean, he's got a girlfriend. Not many people can claim that who are about as shy as him. 
But where he messes up is he kisses Sam and again a truth of dare when he's told to kiss the prettiest girl in the room. Now, hold on, dude. Bad move. I may not be the most, like, completely, like, good-natured person in the world at all. But that's a bad move if you got a girlfriend. So my advice would have been just, like, calm down, take it easy, things will be better. However, things, in fact, do not get better. They proceed to spiral downhill. Charlie gets kicked out of the group. Or not kicked, I mean, they don't really throw him out. They ask him to leave, sort of. And this goes on and, like, skip a couple of scenes. And even Patrick is getting beaten on by the football team, if I'm not mistaken. I wasn't clear who they were. And you see Charlie stand up for him. And that's what lets him back into the group. And this story, more out of anything, is the tale of do what you love. Love who you love. Stand up for yourself and stand up for what you believe in. My rating on this, I don't know if I ever set out the rating system for the movies. I think I did it in the last couple of episodes. This is definitely a watch it now. Get your hands on it any way you can. I'll provide a link to the Amazon, to the book as well if you want to. I didn't read the book, I just watched the movie. I'm not really a big fan of reading books and then watching the movies. I will never do that to y'all. If I do read a book and the movie comes out, I will do two different episodes on two different, probably two different months. So, thank you for watching. If um, you have any questions, comments, like, subscribe, message me. You can find me through the links on my page. I mean, if you want me to review something, you know how to get in contact with me. This has been the Review Zone. This has been Perks of Being a Wallflower which gets, oh, go watch it now. Thank you.